Hi everyone, welcome to Bisaya 24-7, your official Cebuano English tutorial on the web. I'm so glad that um, I'm able to finally um, squeeze one more tutorial before the year ends. And um, please, uh, if you find this page useful, um, click on the link provided and subscribe. You can also check out our official release of our Cebuano tutorial, which is available in Kindle and in paperback on Amazon. So um, I'm so excited and we have quite a lesson today. Um, I'll see you. Hi guys, we are finally on lesson number six. And this has to do with um, how to express negation or affirmation in the Cebuano and Visayan dialect. Now, for most of you, you are probably familiar already with, you know, the translation of yes or no in Cebuano or the Visayan dialect. However, um, this is a very important lesson and uh, bear with me and I can promise you that there is so much more that you need to learn and understand about how to uh, express the very basic agreement or disagreement. So let's see. Uh, first we have yes, o -o, and then for no we have dili. And sometimes no is also expressed as Ayaw. Now, for some, this may be a little confusing, but um, after this lesson, um, you will be able to gain clarity on uh, the difference in the usage of this uh, two words that expresses a negative uh, thought. So let's proceed to the examples. That so let's continue with more examples. And here we have um, the question, Mubiya kaba o dili? Bia is to leave. So, Mubiya going to leave. The, uh, the question then translates to, are you going to leave or not? And then you answer, o o. Mubiya ako. Yes, I am going to leave. Or you can also express it as yes, I am leaving. Dili ko mubiya. Or you can also say dili ako mubiya. Remember the ko here is just a shortened form of ako. And then that translates to, no, I'm not leaving. No, I am not going to leave. Nakasabot ka ba o wala? Sabot is understand. Uh, nakasabot, um, did you understand? So, this one, nakasabot ka ba? Do you understand? O wala or not? O o, nakasabot ko. Yes, I understand. Um, please uh, take note that when you say o o, um, some people tend to just say o. To signify yes. So it, it actually depends on who's saying it. But in most cases, whether you say o oh, oh, or o, oh, um, it's yes. Wala ako kasabot? No, I don't understand. Continue. Let's have more examples. Uh, take into consideration the question, is this your glass or not? 
expressed in Cebuano, it would be Imo ba kining baso o dili. Imo is a possessive pronoun that signifies yours. Kini is another pronoun which signifies this. Kining is just a shortened form for kininga. And then baso is the drinking glass. So this one, imo ba kining baso o dili? Is this your glass or not? And then you answer, oo, ako kanang baso. Kana is a pronoun that says that. Kanang is also a shortened form of two words, kana nga. So this translates to, yes, that is my glass. Dili kana akong baso. That is not my glass. No, that is not my glass. Musugot ka ba? Do you agree? So good is to agree. Oo, musugot ako. Yes, I agree. Dili ako musugot. No, I don't agree. Now, if you notice in this um phrase, there is no o dili in the end. Um, musugot ka ba? But then, um, if I say musugot ka ba o dili? Or if I say musugot ka ba? Um, actually, there is no difference. Uh, what happens is, uh, for most of these questions, the dili part is usually not included. But it doesn't mean that it is not considered. So it's just for the sake of um, speaking the language um, with the shortened uh, form of expressing it. So even if I just say, musugot ka ba? Um, that already expresses the thought that, yeah, uh, there, after that or that question includes odili. So whether I say odili in the end or not, still, you know, that is understood that that question implies the same thing. Musugot ka ba o dili? So let's continue with more examples. And here we have the question. Nakatulog ka ba o wala? Uh, tulog is sleep. So this should be pretty easy. Nakatulog ka ba o wala? Did you sleep or not? Oo, nakatulog ko. Yes, I was able to sleep. Wala. Kukatulog. No, I wasn't able to sleep. Or no, I didn't sleep. Mukuyog ka ba? Nako. Kuyog is to come or to accompany. So, mukuyog ka ba? Nako. Nako is... Um, me, it's like a, a pronoun to signify myself. So this translates to, are you coming with me? Are you going with me? And then you answer with, oo, mokoyo kunimo. Yes, I am going with you. Or yes, I am coming with you. If you say dili ko mo no, 
I am not coming with you or no, I am not going with you. So by now, um, I assume that you have already um, seen the pattern. So it's pretty basic. O -o or dili. So even if it's not emphasized in the question that you have an option to say no, um, it is understood that that is a part of the original question. And we have a few more examples. We just want to make sure that this uh, o, o or dili really um, sticks to our memory. Here we have a question which is, um, did you see the incident? How are we going to express this in Cebuano? Did you see? Um, that means it's a thing in the past. So the action word will probably start with naka. So let's see how is this expressed in Cebuano. C is kita. Kita or kita. So to express did you see, that would be nakakita kaba. And then incident is translated to nahitabo. Hitabo is something that happened or it's an event. And sometimes uh, you can also express this as pang hi tabo. So if you say o o nakakita ako. Yes, I saw. That's the that's the exact translation. Yes, I saw. But then um it is understood that what you're answering or what you're referring to your answer is the original question which includes um, the word um, nahitabo something that happened so um, even if you don't say o -o nakakita ko sa nahitabo it's understood that that is you know your complete answer so in this case, you just um, kind of uh, shorten your answer. But if you also say, Oo, nakakita ko sa nahitabo, that is uh, the complete answer and probably is a, a clearer answer. But nevertheless, you know, even if you just say, Oo, nakakita ko, you're still. Um, completely answering the question. And then, um, if you say, wala ko kakita, that simply means, no, I didn't see it, or no, I wasn't able to see it, or no, um, I wasn't really there when it happened. So, um, for the most part, we were just sticking to the literal translation of the phrases. But now, um, I'm letting you know that it could be uh, expressed in what the, the, the context of the answer really entails. So, when you say, wala ko kakita, it simply means, you know, no, I wasn't a witness to the event or no, I wasn't there when it happened. Nagsulti ka ba sa tinuod? Again, um, this uh, signifies that, you know, the thing already happened in the past. Sulti is, you know, tell or say so this would translate to 
if you're familiar with the word tinood. Tinood is true when translated. So this simply translates to the phrase, are you telling the truth? Or if you want to ask the question, are you telling the truth? Then you can express it in Cebuano by asking, Nagsulti ka ba sa tinood? Um, for the conversational Cebuano, uh, like what I've said earlier, we tend to uh, shorten the words because we already know, you know, the meaning behind it. So if I say, Tinood ba? Tinood ba ni? Tinood ba ni imong gisulti? That's another way of expressing this uh, question. Are you telling the truth? In Cebuano. So, but this one right here, this is the very literal um, expression of the phrase, are you telling the truth? Nagsulti ka ba sa tinood? If you're speaking in Cebuano or in Visayan dialect. Oo, tinood ang akong gisulti. Yes, tinood is true. Ang akong gisulti. Whatever I said. So yes, whatever I said is true. Yes, I am telling the truth. Dili tinood ang akong gisulti. Dili tinood not true ang akong gisulti. What I said. So this translates to no, what I'm telling is not true. I think um there will be um a few examples that you can look up online or probably just you know if I think the most effective way of really checking your understanding is if you um, attempt to understand um, publications or articles that are written in Cebuano and just try to to decode and um, for as long as you understand the basics of um, how to express yes or no and what forms they take in um, conversational Cebuano and Visayan dialect, then you should be good. Um, this should be uh, pretty easy for you to grasp at. So I thought we'd be done by now, but um, I still have a few examples for us. Um, the question, are you Maria's child? How do we say that in Cebuano? So child is translated to anak. Anak ka ba? That's the question. Are you the child of uh, who? Here the name is Maria. So this should translate to are you the child of Maria or are you Maria's child? And then you answer with oh, oh anako ni Maria. Yes. I am Maria's child, or yes, I am the child of Maria. Dili ako anak ni Maria. No, I am not Maria's child. No, I am not the child of Maria. Now this one, um, if there's one thing you need to probably remember, um, this should be the phrase that you have to at least 
um, get to remember. Gihigugma mo ba ako? Now, gugma, when translated in Cebuano, is love. So, this gihigugma um, translates to you did love. And um, mo, that's you. Ako is me, I. Ba is the question. So, this translates to yes do you love me do you love me so if you are so into someone and then you probably just want to ask them and find out you know if the feeling is mutual then you can just say Gihigugma mo ba ako? Do you love me? And the question that you probably would like to hear would be, I mean rather the answer that you probably would like to hear would be, Oo, gihigugma ko ikaw. Yes, I love you. Or yes, I do love you. And this one, oh, you don't want to hear this one. Wala ko ikaw gihigugma. No, I don't love you. Or no, I never loved you. Or perhaps if we are not too literal, we can just take the context for what it is. No, I don't have feelings towards you. So, um, I guess by now, um, it's already clear to you the OO and the Dili part. But then, um, I still have to somehow, um, try to make you understand um, the difference between um, three words that you will hear when someone is expressing negation. And we will tackle that in the next slide. So I assume that you, if you have already uh, started learning the Cebuano language, probably understand already that, you know, to say yes or no, you simply have to say o oh, oh, or dili. But then um, here's uh, the way with which you could say no. And you can either say wala, dili, or ayaw. And the difference is that, you know, when you say wala, it basically means none. Dili, it's not. Ayaw, that means don't. And um, just a quick examples here. Um, say for example, we say walay sulud. Uh, sulud means uh, the contents. So if I say walay sulud, there's no contents. So basically it's empty. And if I say walay kwarta, walay money, no money. And just take note that the wala here, wala with the Y, that's wala I. So it's a concatenated format. And then uh, let's have dili. So if I say dili guapa, not beautiful. Dili, claro, not clear or vague. So it's it's pretty, you know, clear cut. And then we have ayaw. If someone says to you, ayaw singit, uh, they're basically telling you not to scream. So it's, uh, it's an order. Don't scream. And then if 
you are told ayaw uglihok, that means don't move. Um, again, it's an, when you say ayaw, it connotes an order, a command, or a suggestion not to enact something. Now we will have this phrase um, to decode and um, this particular uh, phrase has all three words that we have um, tackled previously. Dili, ayaw, and wala. So I managed to squeeze all three words um, in one phrase. Dili ko mokaon. Ayaw ko ogpugsa kay wala koy gana. So here, let's see. Dili means no, not, or just a negative expression. Ko, that's short for ako, I, me. Kaon is eat, mokaon, going to eat. Ayaw, that's don't. Og is used as a conjunction to connect two objects. Pugsa. Here, um, it's uh, in a form that is um, a derivative of the original word, which is pugos, which means to force. Kai translates to cause or because. And then wala, none, don't have. Uh, gana, gana is the appetite. And this has to do basically um, most of the time with eating. So let's see what the translation is. I am not going to eat. That's for dili ko mukaon. Ayaw ko ugpugsa. That translates to don't force me. Kai, because. Wala koy gana. I don't have an appetite. Now for this one, there's an alternate translation. You can just say, I am not eating. Let me be. Or leave me alone. Because I don't have the appetite for food. So there it is. Uh, we're able to express all three words that symbolizes a negative context. In this next few examples, we will be using wala dili and ayaw um, to show you um, how the meaning of the phrase changes when you replace the used word. So, um, in the first case, the first example that we have, we use the word sleep. So that is tulog in um, Cebuano. Um, if I say wala makatulog, that translates to I haven't had sleep. Haven't had sleep, didn't sleep, or didn't get some sleep. Now what happens if we replace it with dili? How will that change the meaning of this um, phrase? 
dili makatulog that changes to can't sleep or unable to sleep or have difficulty sleeping and then um what if we take daily and just put a yo <clears throat> if you notice here a yo when used in the phrase has to use the connector word which is og it's the conjunction ayaw og katulog now um when you use the word ayaw it's mostly um intended to command or order someone to to do something or not do something so if i say aya o katulog that means i'm telling you you know don't sleep if i say aya o kaon kaon is eat so i'm telling you you know don't eat if i say ayaw o pamakak i'm telling you don't lie now let's have another set of examples this time we will use the word manners or trait or attitude so manners uh, translates to batasan batasan is like the attitude or the character so if i say to someone walay batasan i'm simply saying um, the person has no manners whereas if i say dili batasan I'm expressing that that is not the way we are that is not the nature of things that is not our attitude and then um if I change it to ayaw now I cannot just say ayaw batasan that will not make um a sensible phrase so i have to express it in a way that makes sense so typically this would be expressed in this way ayaw ana nga batasan so the ana that is in the phrase means kana so kana is that and when i say ana nga batasan or kana nga batasan i'm simply saying that attitude or that trait or that character so when i say ayaw ana nga batasan i have a dislike for that trait or that character or that attitude and when i say ayaw ana nga batasan i'm simply telling you you know don't don't you dare have that trait or don't show me that attitude or don't you know don't even express that kind of um actuation or character in front of me so um if you notice already the difference is when you say wala and dili it's it's basically easy to just you know pluck out wala and then you put in dili but once you try to use ayaw ayaw is somehow a different usage that expresses a negative context so you'd have to have other words to be able to complete the thought of 
the phrase. Our next set of examples, we have the word agree. So we have encountered this word already. So good. That is um, to say yes or to agree. Um, wala mosugot. That means didn't agree. So if I say wala siya mosugot, that would mean she didn't agree or he didn't agree. Dili mosugot will not agree. So if I say dili siya mosugot, that means he will not agree. She will not agree. It's it's something that is still about to take place. Now, if I use a yao, so it could be that I'm telling somebody not to agree to someone. So I can just say a yao so good. A yao so good. Don't agree. Don't agree to that. So, again, I'm emphasizing that it's a little tricky to use the word ayaw. And in most cases, ayaw has to do with, um, like, an act. You know, it's like something that you're about to do or something that is um going to happen or going to occur or going to be carried out. Now our last set of examples uses the word uh, money. So the previous slide was um, cut quickly and anyways the last example was about money. So we have um, Walay Quarta no money, dili quarta, it's not money. And the last one, instead of saying ayaw quarta, which is not a complete thought and it doesn't make sense, we do say um, ayaw ug patintal sa quarta. And uh, when you translate that one, that simply translates to don't be tempted by the money. So uh, we have come to the end of the lesson. But before we go, I would like you to remember this key takeaways. Um, there is an obvious difference between wala, dili, and ayaw. But uh, just one thing that you have to remember is that all these words once you hear these words or once you read these words, they all connote the same uh, negative um, context. So just to clarify, I want to say that when you say wala, wala is used mainly to denote not having or it expresses that it is not there or that there's none. And then when you say dili, dili is used to denote that something is not, or it is simply meant to disagree about something. So say dili guapa, not pretty. Um, dili itom, not black. Dili taas, not long. Um, and the last one, ayaw. Ayaw is used mainly to express disagreement about something that is about to occur. Or sometimes it is also used to suggest that you don't want something to happen. You don't want something to occur or transpire and you you tell off somebody by saying ayaw or if say something is happening already and you want to 
cut them short, you want to stop the person uh, who's doing the act from doing or continuing what he is doing, you can just say ayaw. So let us say, for example, if somebody's touching you and you don't want to be touched, then you can just say ayaw. So just remember, when you hear um, ayaw lagi, lagi is already an emphatic no uh, once it is used with ayaw. So it is once you hear somebody say ayaw lagi, or even if you would like to blatantly express no, you can just say ayaw lagi. And in most cases, this um, expression is even um, spoken with with emphasis in the vocals. So it's almost as if you you know you tell of somebody or you scream at someone, no. And uh, in all its simplicity, the shortest translation for ayao is simply the word don't. So we have finally come to the end of this lesson, and I'm really glad that you still um, took the time to be a part of this um, endeavor. And um, just in case, if you want more references that you think could help you in your quest to understand the Cebuano language or the Visayan dialect, then um, check out our books that are available on Amazon. So they are listed here. And um, I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays. And I'll see you next time in our next set of tutorials. Thank you. And please um, remember to subscribe.